ready for the splash. Live, Greater West Bloomfield's dedicated update show. Events, businesses, and people. Anything and anyone causing a ripple in the community. And now, let's dive in to the splash. Live. Good morning and welcome to the Splash Live Megacast Special Edition. We've got the two shows together as one today. I'll explain why in just a minute. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. I'm Dave Scott. Very good to have you here on our program today. And uh, again, it's, it's going to be a special extended program today uh, with both the Splash and the Megacast here together. We'll talk about that, who's coming up, and a whole lot more on the program. First of all, as we do each and every day on our program, I want to thank you for tuning in and, of course, invite you to tune in to all of our platforms. You can listen to us on all kinds of outlets, including Comcast Channel 15 in the Greater West Bloomfield area, AT&T, we're on channel 99 in uh, West Bloomfield, Orchard Lake, Kegel Harbor, Sylvan Lake. You can also find us on the web at civiccentertv.com. Social media, you bet, we're there today on Facebook and also on YouTube, just look for civiccentertv.com. And we also invite you to listen on the radio. Uh, this morning, um, two radio stations for you, 89.3 Lakes FM. And for most of our program today, also on 88.1 The Biff. So Bloomfield Hills Radio, West Bloomfield Radio, all coming together to make our program even more special. So the, the reason we're doing this special broadcast is Tyler Keefe is off for the week. It was unexpected. He had a little medical issue. He, by the way, Tyler is doing just fine. He's great. Talk to him over the weekend. And I know some of you were a little bit concerned because he had to exit before the end of the show on Friday. But I want you to know he's doing absolutely fantastic. But he is going to take the week off this week. So we're going to do something a little special with this extended show. And and I hope, um, I hope you enjoy it here on the program today and all week long. Take a look at our weather in the greater West Bloomfield, Bloomfield Hills, and general Oakland County area. That looked too good today, does it? We've got cloudy skies and rain. We're starting off at about 40 degrees. We're only going to get up to maybe 45 degrees. That's going to be about it. Yeah, hanging in there and hoping for something better tomorrow? Forget it. Even cooler tomorrow with more rain in the weekend if we look all, or during the week as we look all the way to for the weekend. A uh, little bit of an improvement, but uh, I, I, it's going to be cool. And uh, April like weather, not exactly what we want on this, the very first day of May. We we're hoping it would warm up a little bit, but that's just not the case. On the program today, we've got a couple of guests that are going to check in. We are going to hear from a cantor at Temple Israel who will talk about a very important event coming up at Temple Israel on Wednesday featuring Barry. Barry Weiss of the New York Times, Mitch Album of the Detroit Free Press, a program about anti-Semitism. Unfortunately, it's a big story still every day in our country and right here in Metro Detroit with an incident that happened at a Jewish community center in Royal Oak over the weekend, actually on Friday. So we've got that story, we've got this event, and uh, we'll talk about that later on in the program. May 1st, Road construction really kicks in in our area. So it is May, and that means the orange barrels, well, they've been up already, but the orange barrels are going to be up even more. And we're going to talk to Craig Bryson from the Road Commission for Oakland County, talk about some of those construction projects that are starting today, because a bunch of them do start today, and warn you about that, and also talk about what the Road Commission for Oakland County is doing to get input and work on planning from not only you, but from your local elected officials in whatever community you happen to live all across Oakland County. So Craig will be checking in. Good guy. We always enjoy chatting with him. He'll be here a little bit later in the program as we do everything we can to keep up with the roads in our area. So it is election day tomorrow, May 2nd, in many of our communities. Be sure to mark your calendar in West Bloomfield, but also in other communities. Kegel Harbor has a police millage. Novi, there's a library millage. Uh, Northville and West Bloomfield, 
We have school uh, millages and in Berkeley here in Oakland County, police and fire millages as well. So these, uh, these, these elections that happen um, away from the presidential election, so in November, you know, a very high percentage of people go out and vote, but quite often for these elections that happen in May, not as many people get out and vote. So um, absentee ballot uh, options available in all of our communities today. Tomorrow the polls will be open, and if you're in one of the communities where something is going on, uh, it's not like voting twice because you can't do that, right? <laughs> but the impact is almost like that because if you're voting and a lot of other people aren't, you can have tremendous impact. I know our, our local school districts, our local fire and police departments that have issues before you really appreciate you taking time and exercising your right and privilege as a citizen here in the United States to get out and vote. All right, what, what good news do we have today? We got a bunch of it, actually. Gas prices in Michigan are down. This is according to the AAA. They are down an average of 13 cents a gallon from last week. And it's, it's possible that they're going to be dropping even a little bit more. AAA says motorists are paying $3.49 a gallon, three cents less than a month ago, and 53 cents less than a year ago. So we are moving in the right direction. Uh, as we enter the month of May, Michigan motorists are seeing the lowest gas prices of the last four weeks, according to the AAA, and they expect that the prices will continue to come down. It, it's always a little crazy this time of year with gas prices because Usually we see a little dip, but, but they're going to go up, too, again for the summertime because they have a different fuel mixture. There's more consumption of fuels. We're all traveling, going off to our summer vacations and doing all the things that we do. So look for um, uh, the gas prices really to be fluctuating. But the good news today, they're dropping, and the AAA says they may be dropping a little bit more. May is Military Appreciation Month and a time to recognize and show appreciation to all of our service members, both past and present. Oakland County reminding us of that on Facebook this morning, and we remind you as well. Um, certainly, it's, it, you know, Military Appreciation Month should be every month. Military Appreciation Day should be every day, but it's been officially declared, and uh, we have now shared that with you. Interesting piece of news came out last week that you may have missed. Maybe you saw it. Some of the some of the things going on in Lansing um, don't make headlines in all of our papers across the whole state, or on the radio, or on television. This one caught my eye. The state senate last week approved a bill that would remove from Michigan law a law that said an unmarried man and an unmarried woman cannot live together. It is, it, it is a misdemeanor. Yes, really, in this day and age, it is a misdemeanor here in the state of Michigan if you are living together, an unmarried man and an unmarried woman. Now, of course, it's not enforced, but the law is still on the books and the state legislature is finally doing something about it. So, you know, that's the, I guess that's the interesting part of the story, but there's even more, at least from my perspective. This is the part that really surprised me. Nine lawmakers in the state of Michigan last week voted against that. They voted, <laughs> they voted against that arcane, old, outdated law. So not trying to get political here. Just seems to me that um, they're not enforcing it. It's just the way our culture is. Um, I know plenty of people love and support marriage, and I've got nothing, nothing bad for you guys, but it, it does seem a little bit odd that that law is still on the books, considering where we are today, and that nine people voted against taking that off the book. So, so much for that. It is what it is. We, uh, we also had an interesting story here today. We found out that a man won over $4 million in the lottery. Uh, the news just came out, though, that uh, he found that out and he won <laughs> on April Fool's Day. So, uh, as you can imagine, um, the winner was shocked, surprised, and a little bit uh, unclear as to whether this was the true story. Uh, the winner, who is still remaining anonymous, says, I love playing Lotto 47 and usually play every drawing. 
I scanned my ticket at the store after the drawing and got a message to file a claim at the lottery office. And the people at the store said, yep, yeah, that might mean you, you got a big winner. He said, I checked the winning ticket when I got in my car. Couldn't believe it when I saw that I won the jackpot. I called my family, tell them the good news. Of course, April Fool's Day, they didn't, <laughs> they didn't believe a word he said. But and now that all the paperwork has been done and everything is out there, yes, it is absolutely true. Congratulations to our anonymous. Oakland County, by the way, winner who won over, it was like $3 million on April Fool's Day. It's, it's a good day any day of the week or year when, when that happens. Appointments for the next legal aid clinic from Oakland County Legal Resources Center on May 3rd will be accepted. So the bottom line here is if you have a legal issue and you need some help, and you don't have the money, and you live in West Bloomfield, you live in Southfield, you live in Pontiac, you live anywhere in Oakland County, there's a virtual legal aid clinic that is available for civil and non-family issues. If you would like to set an appointment, you should do so today for the May 3rd window. And you can call until 4 o'clock this afternoon. The number's right on your screen, 248 Eight five eight zero zero one two. So this isn't going to help you out with a traffic ticket. That would be a criminal issue. But if you have a civil matter, if you're you know having some issue where you know maybe something with your landlord or something, uh, or some non-family related issue, some other business matter, you owe someone money, they owe you money, um, and you are not in a position to to hire a lawyer. This could be really helpful for you. Again, the number two four eight. 858-0012, right on your screen, free legal help and advice from Oakland County. We've got a lot more coming up on the Splash and the Megacast today. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back with more in just a moment. Good morning. I'm Dave Scott. Uh, Tyler Keefe is out this week, and we will be right back in just a moment. We'll be right back with the Splash Live. Let's relish these moments, made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. <laughs> Keep the festivals going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. And now, back to the Splash, live. Well, good morning and thank you very much. It's the Splash and the Megacast today, a combined broadcast. Thank you very much for tuning in on any of our outlets. You might be watching on Civic Center TV, maybe listening on one of our radio stations, 88.1 or 89.3, West Bloomfield, Bloomfield Hills, wherever you happen to be. Thank you very much. Tyler Keefe out, Dave Scott here for the uh, duration today. Good news from Oakland County. They are giving you a break starting today and until the 16th of June. At the 48th District Court, they are forgiving fees for any civil infractions that have happened. That could be a parking ticket. It could be a building code violation. It could be even a traffic violation. So if any of those things have happened for you and... And you got to still pay the fine, but if the fine has been building up because it's been a long time, well, here now is your opportunity to work that out and solve that problem, all right? So uh, that's going to be happening until the 16th, 48th District Court only. And uh, if you have any questions, you can call the court. Their number is 248 686 5150. They have a second number, 248 686 4158. Call one of those numbers. They're only available till noon. Again, this is going on. It starts today, May 1st, and continues on until the middle of June. And uh, they are going to forgive all of your penalties. For our good friends in Kegel Harbor this morning, uh, don't forget Memorial Day is right around the corner. And that means a couple of big things. It means, A, the Memorial Day Parade, which we will, of course, be broadcasting live. Very much look forward to that. And it also means the big Kegel Harbor garage sale. It is coming up on Memorial Weekend. It's going to be happening from 9 to 4, and that garage sale is a multi 
day event. So if you've got some things around your garage that you want to uh, get rid of and let somebody else enjoy, here's your opportunity for the Kegel Harbor Garage Sale. Going on from 9 to 4, Thursday through Sunday, Memorial Day. That's a ways off, but maybe as you're gathering some items and maybe thinking about putting together a garage sale of your own, you might want to hold off and wait for the big community-wide event. So we couldn't be more thrilled. Uh, Michigan Week is right around the corner, only a couple of weeks away. Mark your calendar for a week from Friday, May 12th. Uh, Michigan Week has been going on for 50 years. This is going to be our 51st annual Michigan Week celebration. It's a great opportunity to honor those who volunteer in all of our communities that we serve. Bloomfield Hills, West Bloomfield, uh, Walled Lake, Kegel Harbor, Sylvan Lake. We have uh, members from all of those area school districts that are, are eligible and often nominated. Um, we're, we're certainly going to have um, some participants from the West Bloomfield schools, from the Walled Lake schools, from the Bloomfield Hills schools, and uh, from all of our community, a lot of community organizations. Now this year, this event is going on at Temple Israel, and that's really good news because we got a lot more room. Temple Israel on Walnut Lake Road in West Bloomfield. It's going to happen on the 12th of May, Friday morning. We have a sports theme this year, which is really exciting, and uh, and and it's it's going to be great because we have. Terry, um, how can I forget his last name? How did I just do it? See, this is what happens when I got too many things going uh, through my, my ears. Terry Foster, my good buddy from the uh, former Detroit News um, sports columnist, former 97.1, the ticket uh, anchor and a radio host, and uh, with our sports theme, great to have a guy from our own community from right here in West Bloomfield who will be our MC. We'll be honoring and recognizing those from our community who have helped and volunteered. And we couldn't be more thrilled to be doing that at Temple Israel. Thank you so much to Temple Israel for making the facility available. Tickets online still go to michiganweek.org. We are going to take a very quick break. And uh, speaking of Temple Israel, we're going to find out about a big event going on there Wednesday night with a couple of the most noted columnists in our country. And uh, we'll find out more about that in just a moment. Good morning. I'm Dave Scott. You are watching The Splash Live. I'm Steve Eisenman of the Detroit Red Wings, and I think every child in Michigan deserves a safe, healthy, and happy childhood. Can we build a state where children trust Michigan isn't just a name, but something our kids believe? Please support Children Trust Michigan as the voice for children and families by visiting the website to learn more. Like what you see? Beautiful works of art, masterworks of metal, and accomplishments of artistry will be on display near you. All kinds of artists from all walks of life come together to celebrate their skill and appreciate their work's beauty. Hot Works presents the 2023 Orchard Lake Fine Art Show. Stop by July 29th and 30th between 2 and 10 p.m. between Powers and Daily off of Orchard Lake Road. Welcome back to The Splash. Dave Scott, a big event going on in West Bloomfield Wednesday night over at Temple Israel, another major event at Temple Israel, as Barry Weiss will be here. She is a noted the, uh, New York Times columnist, and uh, she is going to be doing, along with our own Mitch Album from the Detroit Free Press, good friend of the show, uh, they're going to be doing a program speaking about anti-Semitism, and it's all going to be going on at Temple Israel, May 3rd. It's going to begin in the evening. Tickets are available for the event and for the afternoon. Glow, if you would like to get a hold of them, we'll have that information for you in uh, just a moment. We are delighted now to be joined by the cantor from Temple Israel, Michael Smolash. Cantor Smolash, thank you very much for joining us on The Splash this morning. Good to have you. Hi, Dave. Thanks for having me. Good to be here. Well, uh, you know, unfortunately, this is, um, this is a very important issue. As we found out Friday after a synagogue in Woodward Avenue where Royal Oak was vandalized with anti-Semitic hate speech and, uh, and graffiti over at the Woodward Avenue Shul, I know that had impact on our community as expected. So um, this program that you've got going on Wednesday night at Temple Israel comes at a very important time for our community. Your thoughts? 
Absolutely. That incident uh, shocked everyone here. We sent our support to the Woodward Avenue Shul, uh, as I know did much of the Jewish community. And I wish I could say it was an isolated incident, but this kind of stuff is going around all over the country, and it's exactly what this event is about. Uh, Barry's been speaking out about anti-Semitism really since she began writing professionally. Uh, she's one of the most powerful voices and, and uh, we encourage people to buy and read her book, How to Fight Anti-Semitism. You can get it online uh, before they come uh, or, or after the event. And it's just gonna be a fascinating and really important conversation uh, for us and for the whole community. Well, you've got Barry Weiss coming in and, and if you don't know Barry Weiss and you know Mitch Album, you know that if, if she's the headliner and Mitch is number two, then you know she's got some good. So it's gonna be great. You really have a terrific pair. I'm sure those two know each other and, and you know, knowing Mitch like I do, I think it's gonna be a fantastic program. And, and, and like I said, it's a very important program, but you've lined up a, a great evening. I know people will want to come out and uh, see. And you've got to really be proud that, that you've got these two amazing, noted columnists um, coming into Temple Israel on Wednesday. Absolutely. Mitch has always been a good friend to Temple Israel. You know, he, we hired Barry, and that was really our, our big uh, vision for this. But Mitch was sweet enough and, and generous enough to come and, and uh, really lead the conversation. And he's very interested in hearing in not only her thoughts on Israel, but how it plays into the whole uh, free media, the whole freedom of the press issue. So I, I do think people from Michigan in particular are going to find this the most fascinating conversation on anti-Semitism that they're going to hear this year. I, I, everyone should absolutely come around and see it. Well, and, and you, you, you make a good point too, uh, Kendra Smolash, in that this, there's a bigger issue here. And anti-Semitism is enough of an issue in and of itself. But there's a bigger issue. There is what's going on in the media and what's going on in the press today. And, and in addition, when you talk about anti-Semitism, you, you can't can't help but think about and certainly to some degree talk about um, hate in any form against any community. And it, it's not just the Jewish community that's facing, you know, more hate right now. We're seeing it across all fronts. Of course. In Temple Israel, all of our clergy are involved in uh, interreligious, interracial work to make sure that uh, everyone is protected and everyone is safe. However, not many people recognize that although the Jews make up 2.5%, a tiny drop in America's population, we have the privilege of receiving 57.5% of the hate crimes. So that, that's uh, well beyond equal opportunity in terms of our share of, uh, of hate crimes and anti-Semitism. So that, that is a hugely outsized focus on Jews for many reasons, kind of in the, in the mind of people that are doing this. And unfortunately, Everybody seems to feel like, oh, it's it's those people on the other side of the political spectrum that are responsible. Uh, but one of the things Barry brings up beautifully, and I think everyone should take a, a close look, is that it's coming from both sides of the spectrum, that, that bad actors on what we call the right and what we call the left are, are just as responsible for things like the swastika on the synagogue, things like you know, an old man getting a brick in his face in Brooklyn, and tragically things like the Tree of Life where 11 Jews were murdered, the biggest slaughter of Jews in North America that, that we're aware of, right? So uh, we're definitely, Temple Israel is at the forefront of making sure all religions, all peoples are safe. Um, but we also want people to know, hey, when you're 2.5% of the population, something's wrong when you're receiving 57% of the hate crimes. Well, no question about it. And, and I really applaud you, sir, for not politicizing this. I mean, everything gets politicized. You have just done what I wish more people do all the time and depoliticized it, right? I mean, it just doesn't make any sense to say, well, it's got to be these guys or it's got to be these guys. Let's just deal with the problem. So thank you very much for holding this event. I, I'm, I'm really excited about it. We'll be out there. I look forward to, uh, to meeting Barry and Mitch and seeing Mitch again. And, and if, if the audience and people watching want to get a little bit closer, there really is an opportunity because we have tickets for not only the presentation, but there's going to be an afterglow. And, mm -hmm. and, and knowing Mitch, and I'm sure, I don't know Barry, but I'm sure they'll make themselves available to people that want to get a chance to say hello, maybe autograph a book. So uh, am I correct in that? 
Absolutely. So the evening again starts, doors open at 645. Uh, Barry will speak at 730. I just want to point out, if you are a student or if you have a student in your family, any student at any institution, kindergarten to college, right, comes in free to both the event and the afterglow. And then if you'd like to come to the afterglow, Barry will be signing books and you'll have a chance to say hi. And that starts after the event around 845. It's got uh, wine and dessert and they're $36 for uh, young adults, which is folks under 40, uh, $36 for our members, and $90 per person for the public to come to that. Okay. But students can come to any of this at no charge. This is that's great. something that, they're waiting into. That's awesome. It's all, you go to the Temple Israel website, temple hyphen, temple dash israel.org slash event slash Barry Weiss, but I'm sure if you get in there, you get to temple-israel.org, you'll find your way, and you can always call and look them up, and you, you know, you guys will get a hold of the people over at Temple Israel. Do it, too, because it's really going to be a great night. Thank you very much. Thank you, too, to your congregation for hosting our annual Michigan Week celebration. Couldn't be more thrilled. you got a great facility, and uh, we look forward to being with you on the 12th as well. So good to, good to have you with us this morning, and thanks for your time and comments. Uh, Thanks Cantor, for having good to be with you. Okay, Cantor. Thanks for having me on, Dave. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back in just a moment. More coming up here on the Splash Live and the Mega Cast in just a moment. How can you get involved with upcoming elections? West Bloomfield Township wants you to join the ranks as an election inspector. Get trained on using polling equipment, proper procedures for handling ballots, and more to keep the voting process smooth and safe. If you're interested, go to wbtownship.org for more information or call the clerk's office with the number provided on screen. This community update from Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Watch Civic Center TV with our brand new live captions. To turn on live captions, go to civiccentertv.com and click Watch Live. In your web browser, click on the Options tab in the top right and find the Accessibilities tab. Then just switch on live captions to heighten your enjoyment of our local programming. Thank you so much for watching Civic Center TV. Good morning. Thank you very much for watching. Dave Scott here with a special edition of The Splash and the Megacast. Thank you for joining us on all of our outlets. Thank you, of course, to uh, the Biff Radio and, of course, 89.3 Lakes FM, our radio stations that are here with us this morning. Um, in the other things that I do when I'm not hanging out around here at Civic Center TV, um, I work with tourism. Interesting article today in the Detroit Free Press that was talking about uh, something that is becoming very popular. They say in today's free press, as people start to make their summer travel plans, there are a growing number of options uh, to consume marijuana on vacation from cannabis music festivals to consumption lounges. Um, I, I could tell you from going to tourism related events and working with those in planning in the tourism industry, uh, there is a movement in some of our communities around the state to set up tourism related around consumption of marijuana. And there are tours, there are dispensaries, there are events that are getting set up. It is legal here in the state of Michigan. And, uh, and, and this tourism that is happening here, I know there's a term for it, I can't find it right in front of me, but uh, tourism around um, cannabis related products um, is getting very popular. A lot of other states have it. A lot of people want to travel here to Michigan because we are a legal cannabis state and uh, and set up some tours. So um, just kind of like you, you know, in the olden days would not drink and drive, but maybe go on a booze cruise and a bus and go bar hopping. You can say whether that's a good or a bad thing, uh, but they're setting up the same kind of thing with cannabis now and setting up cannabis events and cannabis friendly um, hotels and bed and breakfast and other things. So um, if you want to find out about this interesting trend, regardless of how you feel about it, it is making news. It is a big trend in the tourism industry. A lot of other states that uh, have embraced cannabis products and, and have it legal have these things going on. So just wanted to make sure that you were 
we're aware of it as well. All right, we're going to take a break. I ran about 15 seconds long, guys. So we'll make it a 30-second break here. And uh, good morning. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you tuning in. And uh, thank you so much this morning for being with us here on The Splash Live and on The Megacast. What's happening around you? Hear about state events, businesses, and from the people behind them on The Megacast, an hour-long TV, radio, and streaming show keeping you informed on the day-to-day -day news. Listen in on talks with volunteer groups, documentarians, and financial advisors. Monday to Friday with your host, Tyler Keeft. Catch The Megacast weekdays from 10 a.m. to 11 on Civic Center TV, 89.3 Lakes FM, and streaming on MyMyTV.com. You are watching and listening to your home for Greater West Bloomfield News, Civic Center TV and 89.3 WBLD Orchard Lake, West Bloomfield, Kego Harbor, Sylvan Lake, 89.3 Lakes FM. Good morning. Welcome back. Good to be with you. This is a special edition of the Splash and the Megacast. We're doing it all together today. Tyler Keefe is out. Um, he did have a little incident on Friday. He's doing just fine. Um, <laughs> I'm laughing now because he wasn't able to complete his show on Friday, but everything was just fine. Um, got all the medical treatment he needed. He's doing great. So I want to let the community know and all the viewers of uh, the Megacast and the Splash tune in to Tyler every day. Um, he's got the week off and he'll be back a week from today. For this week, I I'm sorry, it's going to be painful, but we're going to be spending time together. Um, what's not painful is join, being, being joined by our next guest, who's a good friend of both Tyler and mine, and we're always delighted to have him on the show. Joining us from the Road Commission for Oakland County is Craig Bryson. Craig, good morning. Thank you very much. Good morning, Dave. Thank you for the opportunity. Great to be here. Well, good to be with you and uh, an awful lot going on. So there's a lot of benchmarks on May 1st, all kinds of things on our calendar. And it seems that May 1st is a big day for you guys in the road improvement project business because we have a bunch of road projects that are all kicking off today in Oakland County. Absolutely. Uh, these are four of our projects that are part of our Preservation Overlay Program, which is an $11.4 million program where we essentially put two inches of new asphalt on a road that's in moderately good condition. This extends the life of the road, provides a nice smooth uh, road service. And as you just showed there, we're uh, starting to do preparatory work on Napier Road, Nine Mile Road, 12 Mile Road, 13 Mile Road, as well as uh, Orion Road over in uh, Rochester Hills, Orion and Oakland Townships. Uh, so yeah, a lot, lot of work going on. Um, one of the nice things about these projects is they're pretty fast and relatively painless. Uh, the roads aren't closed. There will be lane closures with traffic directed by flaggers uh, periodically during the work. They typically take a couple of weeks, two to three weeks to, to wrap up with um, several days of, we of work each of those weeks and open uh, the rest of the, fully open the rest of the time. So they're relatively quick and painless and result in a nice smooth new Road surface. No, you know, I think I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I've seen a bunch of these projects. Um, I'm just thinking of some recent ones. Maple Road, um, I think it was a recent one. Uh, Maple Road in Troy, another one. It, you know, you see the barrels go up and then you see them taking the surface of the road off, right? Because they take off the old surface. And well, in then some you're of just, these cases, we don't even do that. You don't even days. do that. Okay. Well, if at least in moderately it, decent shape, this is just it, two inches of asphalt on top of the You just put it right on top. But but, yep. but in some cases, it's been a little bit of a tear off, and then you're thinking, oh right. my goodness, it, it's going to be down for six months. And then you come back in about a week and a half, and they got another lane open, and then it, it, it all comes back really quick. It's a great deal. We as drivers really love it because it is inconvenient, even though we know the roads need to get, to get fixed. It is inconvenient as we come to the spring to see so many orange barrels. I'm sure you realize that. Absolutely. These projects, though, are a great investment. They they preserve the length of the road for a relatively reasonable cost. They allow us to extend the life of the road with relatively minor inconvenience to the motorists, and then we get another you know number of years out of the road before we have to do much more major work to them. 
So um, the other thing, and my notes are scattered all over the place because I'm not as organized as Tyler is, but I did see an article, I think, in the Oakland Press today talking about what you are doing, the Road Commission for Oakland County is doing to make sure that as you're planning future road projects, that you're getting all the input from the communities and from citizens. Why don't you talk about uh, a little bit more about that effort? Yeah, this is our strategic planning process. We do this every two years. Um, and it's a very, very extensive process. We meet with the leadership of virtually every community in the county. That's about 60 individual meetings. Our top leadership, our managing director, deputy managing director, a number of our department directors, excuse me, meet with the community leaders, whether it's the city manager, city mayor, township supervisor, village manager, village uh, president. Um, we invite the county commissioners serving the area to, to join us. And we sit down, we have a very lengthy, um, open, honest discussion with them. We tell them what our plans are in their community, what's new, what's coming up, anything that's changed for us. We ask them about new developments in the community that could affect traffic or roads. We ask them how our service is in their community, if there are areas where they would like to see, you know, a little additional focus, if there are things they like, things they don't like. Um, you know, just make sure we've got a good line of communication with them, make sure their input is part of our planning process. And then we use all that feedback. All that feedback goes into a big report that helps prioritize our spending for years to come after that. And, and we rely heavily on the, on the information they provide us. Um, it's a great process. I don't think there's any other county road agency in the state that does as extensive of a planning process with all their partner communities uh, in the county. And, um, you know, we, we really enjoy it. It's a lot of work, but we really appreciate the information we get out. In the, and it helps to continue to maintain the great partnerships that we have with all the communities in the county. All right, Craig, you and I have a great partnership. Maybe I'm about to destroy it by asking you questions I didn't let you know about before the interview, but I'm not too worried because you are always the most prepared guest we ever have on the show, and you know your subject matter so well. So a couple of other things here that um, I was thinking about. Uh, for our viewers in West Bloomfield, Kego Harbor, and Sylvan Lake, we know that there's been talk about a major project there at Orchard Lake Road as it curves through Kego Harbor, continues on through Sylvan Lake, and I know you had some public meetings meetings on that not too long ago in the community is uh, there was some discussion as to whether or not we were going to be able to get that done this year. Um, do you think that that's going to be happening? Um, obviously, we're not starting that on May 1st, but do you think that that project might be continue to happen this um, spring and or summer? It is planned to go this year, and that is, you're right, that's a big project. It's a, uh, a $3.1 million dollar um, resurfacing project, but it's also a reconfiguration of the road. As I'm sure you know, it's right now it's four lanes, two in either direction without a center left turn lane. That is not a design that we like. That's a dangerous design. And we've seen a history of rear end collisions there. People stop in one of the through lanes to turn left and they get rear ended. So what we're doing there is um, what we call an unbalanced uh, three lane road where we have excuse me, an unbalanced uh, four lane road where we have two lanes in one direction, one lane in the other direction, and a continuous center left turn lane. We think that'll be a much safer option uh, for that community, uh, those series of communities that it goes through. Um, we've worked a lot with all the communities along the road. We've gotten support from all those communities. We've had a number of public meetings, gained public input. Um, so that is that is moving ahead. No, I like what you, you called it. Um, I, I had some notes here, and I, I thought I was using all the cool road terms here when I did my last presentation on this during our state of the communities. I thought that was called a road diet, where you get rid of, like get rid of one of the lanes. Is that another term you guys are using? It is. This is both a road diet and an unbalanced because we're, we're reducing right. <laughs> the number of through lanes, but we're also shifting it so it's it's unbalanced in the sense that there's two lanes in one direction, one lane in the other. So it's, it's both of those cool terms. <laughs> well, and, and the bottom line is it's going to help traffic continue to make it through that area. You already did some improvements last year. You've been working real hard down around Orchard Lake and Telegraph and, and that area in Sylvan Lake, and I know there's a lot of other infrastructure that's going on in there. So that's all, all really good news, and we're really excited about all that. How did winter go? It, it seemed to us that this wasn't one of the worst winters we've had in southeastern Michigan. How did it fare for your crews? 
No, that's a that's a fair assessment. It certainly wasn't one of the worst. Um, it was slightly lighter than than most winters. Um, you know, as, as usual, it's not quite as light as as people might think. We didn't have as many big, heavy, you know, storms, but we had a lot of small incidents with freezing rain and a dusting of snow. And, and of course, we have to be out at the same levels for those to make sure the roads are safe. So we used slightly less than our, our five-year average of salt this year, but only slightly less. Uh, and same on, on our overtime. So there will be a little bit of savings, I expect. Uh, we haven't crunched all the final numbers yet, but I don't think it's going to be a huge windfall as we've seen it occasionally on in, in very mild winters. Well, I hope it helps out and maybe you can use some of those bucks or something else. I'm sure with all the needs though in our county, uh, those dollars will not go wasted. Hey, before we go, um, one of the cool things that I love traveling with in my car is, is one of these apps. And I happen to use the Waze app, but there are a number of other apps. And they do such a good job, Craig, uh, of letting me know when road construction is going to be coming up. Um, what do you guys think about those things? I, I got to imagine that they're helpful because you can get on the app and then you can kind of plan, even if you're not been going. Now, people should go to your website, get all the information, plan ahead pre-plan their route like they're going on, a, on you know, like they're a pilot building a flight plan but let's be honest and not everybody really does that you jump in the car but if you get on the app you see this information it's helpful do you guys see that as as uh, helping motorists and are, are you excited about that development absolutely we, we love ways we work closely with ways we share all of our information with them um, we talk to them periodically when something comes up they're very good to work with they they appreciate getting information from us and they you know they promptly post it on the app uh, so we love ways the the only challenge is there are more and more of those apps coming along and it's tough to to stay on top of them and make sure all of them get our information and that uh, I anticipate that becoming a bigger challenge in the future. But so far, Waze and Google, for example, are, are, are I've been great to work with and we, we think that's any way we can get that information out there that will put it in the hands of the, the people that need it is a good thing. Well, it's, it makes it very convenient because you can't always know as you're trying to get, like I'm trying to get from where I live to Ann Arbor and then the on-ramp is closed down to 696 as it was for a little bit and all that construction going on over there and it's just hard we're busy people we can't keep up with all that so those apps are really helpful i i had no idea that they actually talk to you and you talk to them and exchange information i thought it was just drivers going down the road so that i feel great about that and hopefully those guys in that app industry can do a good job about you know making it easier for you and not having to you know have you feed information to 17 different databases i can see how that would be a big pain in the in in, in the yeah you know what <laughs> absolutely and no they are really good to work with and they, they have been great and and it is confusing i mean not only is in oakland county alone not only is there the road commission with all of our projects there's mdot with all of their projects sure. and there's 40 cities and villages all of which do projects on their own roads so you know that's what 40 42 entities that we all have to kind of keep track of that may be interfering our our commutes at one point or another Craig Bryson, the hardest working guy in communications in Michigan. I appreciate you taking time for us. It's always important to let people know what's going on with the roads. You do a great job. Good to be with you this morning. Thank you for joining us right here on the Splash and the Megacast. Thank you. Great to have the opportunity. I appreciate it. Road Commission for Oakland County with a lot of projects coming up right here. Good morning. I'm Dave Scott in for Tyler Keefe, and we thank you so much for tuning in this morning. It's awful good to have you with us right here. You're watching The Splash and The Megacast. Wake up, Greater West Bloomfield. Start your mornings with The Splash and tune in for The Splash Live. Get acquainted with people, places, and activities that are live, local, and for you. First thing in the morning, weekdays at 9.30 a.m. on our Civic Center TV YouTube page or watch us live at Civic Center TV or on Facebook. The Splash Live, Greater West Bloomfield's live update show. Watch Civic Center TV with our brand new live captions. To turn on live captions, go to civiccentertv.com and click Watch Live. In your web browser, click on the Options tab in the top right and find the Accessibilities tab. 
Then just switch on live captions to heighten your enjoyment of our local programming. Thank you so much for watching Civic Center TV.